off we go on Capital One Bowl Week from beautiful downtown Orlando. It's the 2003 Mazda Tangerine Bowl. The first bowl game for the teams from the BCS leagues. Seven and five North Carolina State for the ACC. Kansas six and six out of the Big 12. Slightly overcast, little wind, but it's a perfect night. We never say it rains in Orlando. <laughs> no. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Dr. Jerry Punch joins us in a little bit. Well, guys, in 20 years, when people talk about North Carolina State football at the turn of the century, they're going to refer to these four years as the Phillips Ri Philip Rivers era. Mm -hmm. It comes to an end tonight. Kirk, uh, this is a guy we've seen plenty of times on Thursday nights. What a great person and what a great accomplishment in his four years. You know, it seems like it was just the other day, the Indiana game with Philip Rivers going up against Antoine Randall. But what an unbelievable career. You think about what he's been able to accomplish throughout the four years but this year I know Philip Rivers and I know what North Carolina State didn't get on the national scene because of some key losses but he stepped up in big games against Ohio State and also against Florida State and think about this in the four years that he started in North Carolina State he averaged close to nine wins per year wow. in Raleigh that says all you need to know about his accomplishments and what he did at NC State could you imagine what he would have done this year with a defense yeah exactly man you're talking about defense North Carolina State's defense is 116th out of 170 not pa on pass defense. Not good. Yo, <laughs> Kansas should be able to score with Bill, Bill Whittemore. You know, he's one of the best run pass quarterbacks that no one's seen in college football this year. But, you know, they got a potent offense at Kansas. They average 29 points a game in the Big 12. They're 6-2 and two when he starts at quarterback. If he plays, they got a chance to win. When he got hurt, they lost three straight games without him there. I Bill game. Whittemore. Oh, yeah. Lots of points. I think Lots Kansas got points. a chance to score. With him. Mark Mangino, he was an assistant for Bill Snyder at Kansas State, for Bob Stoops at Oklahoma, from 2-10 and ten to 6-6 six and six in a bowl game. Chuck Amato, four years at NC State, fourth bowl game. Kansas won the toss, deferred to the second half. It belongs to NC State as we get going at the Mazda Tangerine Bowl. The kickoff return for A.J. Davis out at the 35-yard line. So Jerry Punch for the 51st and final time. Philip Rivers leads NC State on the field. And Michael, Chuck Amaro said there's no way you can put a price on the value Philip Rivers has had of this NC State program. His records on the field speak for themselves, but uh, he's been even more impressive off the field. As an 18-year-old freshman, he phoned his mother every Sunday just to tell her he loved her. As a sophomore, he married his high school sweetheart, Tiffany. As a junior, they welcomed their first child, a daughter named Hallie. He's a loving son, devoted husband and father, who firmly believes those are the awards in life that make a difference. What a special, special young man. ACC Player of the Year. We'll talk more about him as the night goes on. Opening drive starts from the 36. It's a reverse to Tremaine Hall. Got a block from his backup tight end, Richard, and picked up a first down close to midfield. So Hall, the good game on first down. As Mark and Trev were talking in the studio, T.A. McClendon is healthy. That could be a difference in this NC State offense. He's good. Jericho Cotri could become the all-time leading pass catcher at NC State tonight. Also on the Mazda starting lineups, up front, they've had some injury moves. John McKee in the right guard. He's in there because Ricky Fowler is out. You want the best of the bunch? 54. Attack Sean Locklear, the senior, was first team all ECC this year. After an 11-yard pickup, first down from the 47. They fake the play they ran on the opening play, and Rivers passes to McClendon across midfield. Up down at the 46, gain of about seven. Jonathan Lamb on the tack. Here's the Kansas defense, gave up 28 points per game. Three seniors start up front. David McMillan may be the best of this four. One player who doesn't start, Travis Watkins, will see a lot of. Three linebackers, all sophomores, strength of the defense. Toomey in the middle is the heart and soul. Watch number one if you want to see the passion tonight. Corners got issues over here. Charles Gordon, see him? He's the top pass catcher. Moved over to defensive back three games ago. Remus Johnson on the other corner. Those two guys are going to have their hands full tonight. Officially a pickup of eight, so this is second and two. And Rivers up top for Washington. Touchdown. Richard Washington. And just like that, it begins for the pack. Well, minute two. Well, that's right. Minute two seconds, three plays. Kansas plays zone on three straight plays, trying to be very conservative, trying to avoid the big play. Yeah. Third play, 45-yard touchdown pass from Washington, getting behind zone coverage. Well, offensive coordinator Neil, Neil Mozzoni lied to us. He said they weren't going to run. They ran one. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they they threw in that little trickery there in their first yeah. play. And then, poop, poop, poop. Yeah, I have a feeling... 
Phillip might throw for a few yards tonight. Yep. Adam Kiker, the senior kicker, is on for the extra point. Kind of a snap of Danny Young in the hold of Chris Young in 62 seconds. Welcome back to the bowl season, Kansas. Phillip Rivers up top to Richard Washington. First touchdown catch of the year for Washington. It's seven nothing. Don't go away it's now. <laughs> Took a buck two for Philip Rivers and the Wolfpack to go on top. I think he's sweating there. Yeah, I don't ground. know. A little bit maybe. Uh, might, might be just damp. Just from being, just from warming up. But yeah. And when yeah. you rush three and you drop eight, you want to make sure that you don't give up the big play behind. Gordon, Mike, you talked about he's a receiver and he's moved yeah. over to help them the latter part of the season and he's made some good plays. But there, Washington got right behind him and Philip Rivers put it right on the money. Although they only rushed three, I tell you what, that Derek Thomas and Sean Locklear did a nice job at the tackles. Adam Piker doing the kickoffs here tonight in the hands of John Randall. He took it across the 20s, brought down at the 26-yard line. And Freddie Autry Lindsay made the tackle. So Rivers has put up seven. Let's see what the man on the other side can do. The Kansas quarterback, he's a senior as well. Bill Whittemore playing his final game. As Lee mentioned, when he was healthy, this team's offense was good. That's when they won all their games. He got hurt in the Kansas State game. They lost that game and the subsequent three. He came back for the season finale, a 36-7 win over Iowa State. Senior, three schools in four years. Every season with an injury, gets a chance to close it out here in a bowl game. The six-footer with the first down handoff to Clark Green. Only gets out back to the line of scrimmage. Dom McCargo in on the tackle. So behind Whittemore, handling the ball is Green, who averages 20 touches a game. See the guy in the middle there, Simmons? He's their game-breaking threat. Gordon, the other wide receiver, is the one who starts over on the defensive side as well. Up front, this is a lunch bunch, a lunch pail bunch. Vaughn in the middle, the center. Big 12 Offensive Newcomer of the Year. That's pretty tough to do as a center. He did. This pass is caught by Brandon Rodeau. Off he goes to the 45-yard line. A.J. Davis made the tackle against the second-worst pass defense in America. Only Stanford gave up more pass defense yards. Look at the guys across the front. Manny Lawson, a linebacker, starts as the defensive end tonight because of a team suspension. Autry Lindsey, Hoyt Thomas among the best tacklers. In the secondary, Greg Golden, their starting cornerback, a junior, not here, sent home. Thus, Devontae Edwards has to step up with Reed on the corners. Andre Maddox is their top tackler. Clark Green carries out to the 47, second and eight, coming up. Kansas is not on TV a lot. Kirk, give me a feel for what they like to do on well, offense. Because of the versatility, if you know Mark Mangino's offense, go back to the years at Kansas State with Michael Bishop, Jonathan Beasley. Then it, it, he developed with Mike Leach in Norman, Oklahoma with Bob Stoops. When Mike Leach went to Texas Tech, he continued to add a little bit to it. It's going to be the spread offense, and he has a quarterback who is versatile. He can run and he can throw, and they try to take advantage of spreading the field and take advantage of his versatility. Green had a couple of blockers. He got it out to midfield. We're going to have third and five coming up. Well, if you uh, didn't follow Kansas in their uh, six and six season, after two and ten last year, they were three and five in the Big 12, three and one out of the league. Their best win of this season, you see the loss to Colorado, a tough one. Their best victory of the season, you would have to say, came when they beat Missouri 35 to 14. Their in state rival and a good Missouri team. A huge win for this program. That red line will be in there when we have third down, so you can see the line of scrimmage. To get the first down at the 45, it's Rideau again, and he has about 11 yards. That was a very, very good call that time by the offensive coach because what they did is they brought that quick post because they can't get good pass protection. I like the fact that this Whitmore gets the ball quickly out of his hands, Kurt. Yep, and Mark Mangino told us that they're going to move some people around. That time, three receivers off to the right, one receiver isolated back to the boundary, and took advantage of one-on-one -on -one coverage to Rideau and man-to-man -man coverage. Nice throw there by Whitmore. Same look here, bud. Yeah. Three receivers down by us, one up top, and they go up top. Same place. It's Rideau. 
It's another first down. Kirk, what, what does that do, three on one side and one into the boundary? Well, what he's trying to do there is he's, because North Carolina State plays a lot of man coverage and a lot of pressure, it forces them to tip their hand and showing what they're doing. It's helping Bill Whittemore as a quarterback look into the eyes of the defense and have a feel for what they're doing, and it gives them a pre-snap read. That way, by the time he calls his cadence, he knows where he wants to go with the football. Back-to-back -back times, here they come a third time. Don't be shocked to see him now come to the field with a three receiver. Are. North Carolina State needs to change that one-on-one -on -one coverage to the short field or they're in trouble. Take the handoff back to this side. Up top and incomplete. Had two receivers down there, Moderick Johnson and Mark Simmons. It was Simmons who had a step and a little separation. And remember, with North Carolina State, this is a team that early in the year, Marcus Hudson was lost to academic uh, eligibility. as a, He was a freshman last year, would have been a great player this year. They haven't had him all year. Greg Golden is not playing in his football game. He's been suspended. So you're dealing with an area that when they leave him alone out there by themselves on an island, you're really rolling the dice if you're Chuck Amato. This is second and ten. Kansas opening drive of the game. Fake to the fullback. Option to Clark Green. Who is hustled out of bounds at the 23. We're going to have third at about a half dozen coming up. Freddie Autry Lindsay over there. It's the next phase with a ton of man coverage and a quarterback who can run and a tailback who likes to get down and run downhill. You're going to see that Kansas will take advantage of that. They're going to attack the outside, try to pitch it, and now you have those receivers running the secondary off. Now you have a back who's running downfield. And remember one thing about North Carolina State defense, zero seniors. Very young football team. they got to make some quick adjustments. They come back to the three to one side, one to the boundary, wide open. Charles Gordon, he's at the 10, he's at the 5. Get me a calculator. We're going to have a lot of points here tonight. Touchdown, KU. I feel like I'm at Allen Fieldhouse. <laughs> a 23-yard pass from Whittemore. Johnny Beck, junior kicker at a KCK, Kansas City, Kansas. One kicker, Jared Brooks is the other, and Brooks comes on to add this extra point. Gordon comes up with his fifth touchdown. The freshman who we saw on defense in the first series got beat for a touchdown, scored a touchdown. Capital all square at seven. Woodamore, very good in that drive, guys. He was four or five for 66 yards. And it's very, very important for a football team that's six and six to answer the heavy favorite. And they did, Kirk. Yep. NC State was a lot of pressure on that first series. A lot of man coverage. They brought Maddox to safety, and they left Gordon all by himself. Nice recognition there by Whittemore to get him the football. Johnny Beck's kickoff. A.J. Davis on the return. Nice returns to the near side for the second time. He's out to the 31. Jerome Kemp on the tackle. Lee takes us back to the touchdown. One of the reasons why this is a touchdown. Watch Whittemore right here. And number 95, Martin's going to hit him right in the left arm. And he throws the ball under pressure. Watch. Boom. Now, as soon as the play is over, you'll watch him. He grabs his left arm as we were watching him. Remember, this kid's been hurt a lot. Hopefully, he didn't get hurt on that one. But, boy, that was a nice, tough guy. Tough guy. guy. Very competitive. Very competitive. He's not going to back down. NC State, I'll tell you what, went right down in three plays. Kansas came right back. They showed a lot of heart during that drive. NC State's turn to respond. Drive start at the 32. Rivers has five options and a lot of green grass. Got a block and got a first down at the 44. Tremaine Hall, the receiver, came back through the legal block that picked up a dozen yards. Picked up two guys. He absolutely knocked two guys down, Kirk. You guys see that? Yep. Beautiful comeback by Tremont Hall. Watch if you keep your eye on number 21. He'll, the left part of your picture, you guys watch this. Well, keep your eye on this. Guy. What I love is he's, as soon as he yeah, sees watch, his quarterback he needs two. help. He goes, one, two. Knocked out the second guy. <laughs> but he was sizing him up. It's like bowling ball. That's right. <laughs> Nick Reed, the sophomore linebacker, was the man he got first. Rivers runs for a dozen. From the 43, he tosses to McClendon. Stumbles and gets just the uh, T.A. McClendon. 
over a thousand yards last year as a freshman a difference maker for this NC State pass oriented offense this year he only added 536 yards but he was really never healthy here's, you, here's what you need to know about him seven games when he's run for 100 yards they're seven and up well that's the, the missing link for this offense when you put in a healthy T.A. McClendon to go with it the, the mind of Philip Rivers and his philosophy of this offense it's nearly impossible to stop it when they're hitting on all cylinders and he is healthy tonight after a pickup of one second and nine Cotchery yet to catch a pass taken away they throw to the fullback chance Moyer who dropped it it was nearly intercepted Moyer, who's a country singer in his uh, away from football time, caught the only ball that was thrown his way all year for a three-yard touchdown against Virginia. Well, this time he started to look up the field thinking about how much more room am I, do I have to go to pick up a first down. And he's lucky that by missing that, that Floodman didn't pick that off. Third and nine. Red line yard of scrimmage line of scrimmage yellow line first down Kansas rushes five Rivers pass is caught by Cotchery first down at the 43 Jericho Cotchery chance tonight to become the all-time leading pass catcher in NC State history he got 13 there in a year of the receiver in college football Here's a guy that doesn't get the appreciation that he should. He's going to be one of those guys that plays at the next level for 10 or 11 years as a third receiver or a second receiver and has a phenomenal career. Phillip Rivers told me yesterday, he said, you know, for a guy that's been around, he said, you know, the coaches talk about how every drill, every sprint, every pass he catches, 100% effort, it takes it beyond where he's supposed to go. He's a great player. First down, fake McClendon. Come back to Cochran. Got a block. Made a man miss. First down at the 28. The Kansas coaching staff wanted a flag on Sean Locklear, the left tackle. They felt he pushed in the back on Charles Gordon, the quarterback who caught the touchdown earlier. Yeah, they, now they're, they're showing their own style of having trips to the field. They're going to motion over Contrary. Now he's just going to use him a little bit as a decoy and set up the screen. And now he shows what he can do in the open field. But something to remember, which is very rare, when you have a four-year starting quarterback who's played 50 times, almost only said if we score in the first series, Philip Rivers will call the plays in the next series. So if he's calling these plays, he's off to a pretty good start. McClendon after the fake toss, bouncing to the outside. Inside the 20 and out of bounds at the 50. If they run a play where they've well, gained less than 10 yards, that one was 14. That's and another a, first down. That's a per perfect example of T.A. McClendon healthy. He breaks tackles. He's 5'11", 215 pounds. And what I like about him the most is he has a low center of gravity, and then he keeps going. I thought, as a freshman, and I said this before, I thought he was a better running back than Maurice Moret at Ohio State. I know people don't think that, but when this guy's healthy, wonderful football player, Mike. Great Jordan. balance. NC State has run nine plays tonight. Six of them have gotten over 10 yards. They're averaging 13 a play. They need 15 for a touchdown. Rivers now throws. There's 15. There's a touchdown, number two for Richard Washington. I want you to remember now, Philip Rivers called those plays. Not only does he have a future in the NFL, he has a future as an offensive coordinator. Outstanding drive, because this is not very common for him to have the reins. And I don't mean like check with me at the line of scrimmage. I mean call the formation, call the play, buy enough time there, finds Richard Washington all alone. That's where the area where he's improved the most. Well, people, buying the time and throwing it downfield. If people haven't seen him before, he's a lot quicker than people think. He's got good movement, good athletic ability to get away from the pass rush. That was a perfect example of Philip Rivers' athletic ability to get open and throw that football. A penalty market thrown as we lined up. I think Kansas has 12 on the field. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 men on the field. They should have had 12 in the play before this. Yeah, well, not on the extra point. Just on defense. I mean, the whole half. They might need 13. Now, the good news is Bill Whittemore and the boys are about to come back out. 
We call and North Carolina out, State yeah. is 116 out of 117 teams in the pass defense. Yep, we're off to a, a solid shot. start tonight. 66 right. yards in the first drive they gave up. Adam Kiker adds the extra point. 617 gone by. Three possessions, three touchdowns. Rivers has two of them. 14 7, not even halfway through the first quarter. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2003 Mazda Tangerine Bowl, presented by Mazda. There's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. In part by City Identity Theft Solutions. Free help getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. And by Cheaper by the Dozen, a supersized comedy starring Steve Martin, now playing. From the home of the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, where Christmas time is a great time, we welcome you to the Mazda Tangerine Bowl. Philip Rivers' final game as a collegiate 14-7 NC State leading Kansas. This kickoff comes down to John Randall at the five. Has a seam, and Randall goes through the middle. Good field position at the 42-yard line. Those of you tuning in for Sports Center right now, here at the top of the hour, six in Raleigh, five in Lawrence. Sports Center's on over on ESPN2. Monday Night Countdown will be on over on ESPN2 as well tonight. We're here for Capital One Bowl League getting underway with the Mazda Tangerine Bowl. NC State, seven and five out of the ACC. Kansas' first bowl game in eight years, six and six out of the Big 12. We've had three possessions and three touchdowns. Now Bill Whittemore in Kansas with a chance to respond. The senior, who is a good runner, gets about five yards on that keeper. This is a tennis match. It's going to break <laughs> serve here. Whittemore is a guy who was very talented in the state of Tennessee as a high school performer. Matter of fact, is the offensive player of the year coming out. But because of his size, just under six feet, nobody thought he'd be a Division I quarterback, so he didn't get Division I offers. Thus had to go a more circuitous route to end up in the Big 12. This pass is engulfed by Mark Simmons, who in turn is engulfed by the NC State defense. Andre Maddox stopped him for no game. It's pretty obvious Kansas is going to stick with that package with three receivers to the field and, and isolating the one receiver back to the boundary. And it looks like, as Lee and I were talking about, North Carolina State trying to make some adjustments, mixing in some different coverages at times, man, and at times playing a little bit more zone. That time they were able to sit back and respond to it and make a play. Renault and Simmons are at the bottom of the screen. In motion, Lionel Anderson, the tight end, who gives a block to give Whittemore some space to run for a first down. Out to the 47-yard line. Brought to his knees by Garland Heath, the freshman, and a late flag comes in after the chatter. It uh, could be the first down picked up, and then the dead ball personal foul on Clark Green. Our officials from the Western Athletic Conference, as you watch all these bowl games, a conference not represented on the field, will have its officials working the game. Dead ball, personal foul, against the offense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Now, the reason why that play was successful to the outside, number 86, Lionel Anderson, goes in motion and he turns. Watch it, top of the picture, makes a nice block, Kirk, and allows Whittemore to get to the outside. I like that concept of moving Whittemore right and left and get away from that pass rush. Yeah, one of the other things that helped there was Garland Heath, the safety, has got to get up. Yeah. I mean, realize that the quarterback's taken off and running. Once he's five yards across the line of scrimmage, he can no longer throw the football. <laughs> that time, Clark Green got a little bit caught up in the emotions. Cost of his team 15 yards. Since it's a dead ball foul, it's still first and 10. And Whittemore goes up top, overthrowing the intended receiver, Mark Simmons, out of DeSoto, Texas. 
Well, as mentioned, this is the beginning of Capital One Bowl Week. It continues tomorrow night with the inaugural Plains Capital Fort Worth Bowl. The team playing in its own stadium, TCU, taking on Ryan Dinwiddie in Boise State. Coverage begins with College Game Day, presented by Outback Steakhouse at 7 Eastern. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2. Over the next 13 days and nights, you'll see 18 games. That's my favorite. That's one game I'd pay to see. That's the big one, huh? Oh, I like that game. Well, that's going to be exciting. You get a chance, folks, watch that ball game. And that Dinwiddie can play as a quarterback for Boise State. Second and ten. Woodamore's throw is caught by Mo Derek Johnson, who has a first down at midfield. Almost a uh, late hit on the play on Stephen Tullock, the freshman linebacker. But it is a first down. Everybody talks about the BCS and what to do. I tell you, how would Boise State against Miami of Ohio be? That oh, would be a great game. Let them play a week after all the games are over. I'm happy for the Boise State kids that they don't have to play a home game. Not that it wasn't a great on-field advantage, but they get to experience a bowl trip as they go to TCU. But it's a shame they have to play a road game in that situation. They got off the blue carpet. Yes, they did. Here is There's Anderson. As a pass catcher, another. Have we had more first downs picked up on first down than we saw all season? Yes. <laughs> Let's go down to Jerry Bunch. Now, as you mentioned, Bill Whittemore has had some injuries in his career. And this year, he missed three football games because of an injury to his clavicle, which is a collarbone in the very first drive against Kansas State. He shoved the collarbone out where it joins the sternum, the breastbone. Why did it go out in the inside instead of the outside? Because two years ago in junior college, he had the outside part sutured down. The inside's the only one he could give. Very concerned about him tonight. Remember, that's an area that can be very susceptible when he runs the football. Mm. Tough guy. Every season has been interrupted by injury. Fake the hand. Fake the reverse. Up top. It's Renault. He couldn't pull it in. Maddox came over to help on the coverage against the six foot four junior out of Beaumont, Texas. The number that stood out to me is Doc was talking the graphic there with 17 touch 17 touchdown passes, only four interceptions on the year. That tells you about the advantage of having a quarterback who's been around and, and making great decisions in Mark Mangino's offense. And the thing I liked about him, he was hurt for three weeks, come back against Iowa State, runs for two, throws for one, 306 yards of total offense. He's the winner. Yep. He's a winner. He sure is. This time they hand it to Charles Gordon. He's played DB, caught a touchdown, and is right at the yellow first down line at the 28-yard line. Gordon, the freshman, has brought speed to this team. He's out of Carson, California, and uh, earned some freshman All-America honors for his kick returning and wide receiver play. In fact, he was named freshman All-American by Sporting News. Mm -hmm. And he's a tremendous looking athlete, 5'11", 165. And the thing I like about him, Kirk and Mike, is the fact he's such an athlete, but he's got that California speed. <laughs> Boom! Can he play? Turn the corner there. Oh, didn't he ever? Came in motion. The defensive back trying to run him with him was Victor Stevens, and he couldn't stay with him. Now he's one of the three receivers. Near side. Looks like the center forgot the snap count. That's always a problem. <laughs> Dead ball. Ball start in the offense. Five yard penalty. Replay first down. Well, we mentioned Whittemore's uh, injuries. He had the successful start to the season as Kansas opened four and one. Lost to Colorado, beat Baylor, so they're 5-2, play in-state rival K-State, and Woodmore gets hurt. Injures that right shoulder Jerry talked about in the first quarter. They lose that game, they lose at Texas A&M, lose to Nebraska, lose at Oklahoma State, but he gets a huge ovation and a hug from his coach, Mark Mangino, as he comes off the field, part of the 36-7 win over Iowa State. Again, a feeling for what he's been able to do, and... In terms of numbers in the Big 12 this year, only B.J. Simmons out of the pass-happy Texas Tech offense. It's a great opportunity for this program, the Kansas program, to show the nation what they're doing outside of basketball season. I mean, this is a team that people have not seen nationally for years. And Mark Mangino in his second year there has turned this program around, has them believing, and tonight you're seeing a pretty good example of that. They could have very easily folded their tent, but they're, they're fighting back and showing that they've got some toughness. See that number? 251 yards. We're on pace for 1,500 yards tonight. Whittemore's pass is incomplete. 
It was behind Mo Derek Johnson. Right? Is that right? 250 yeah. in 10 minutes. The time six, 250. That's 1,500 yards. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> no kidding. It's a long time. It's a long about Mark Mangino. The thing about him, I like about him, 11 years as an assistant football coach at Oklahoma, Kansas State. He was around a winning program. The records of those two teams while he was there, 100 wins, 30 losses, and one tie. The guy knows what to do with the football team. You know what that means? That means when he addresses this team, they listen because they know he's been around winning programs. Second and 15, waiting for a man to break free. It should be a flag. Maybe I missed it, but I thought Gordon was knocked down as he was in the middle of that route. He was knocked down. Okay. <laughs> I just, uh... He was knocked down by Victor Stevens. Yes. No flag. Tell Third, 15 coming. I know Chuck Amato has spent a lot of time in Florida State, and he believes in a philosophy of playing a ton of man coverage and turning everybody else loose to put pressure on a quarterback. But I'll tell you, when you don't have corners and you don't have defensive ends that can get pressure, it makes it for a long year. And that's what's happened this year because of the youth up front. They've allowed so many yards through the air, 216th, 116th in the nation this year, in yards allowed through the air. So NC State brings some heat. One of gets some time, but his pass is knocked down and almost intercepted. It was John McCargo who made the deflection and nearly turned into a Manny Lawson interception. Well, this time that pressure got to Whittemore. They did bring Maddox again from the outside. And they're just trying to mix it up, trying to get Whittemore off balance as best they can. And they got to him. McCargo definitely knocked that ball away and that did not allow Kansas to have a chance for the first down. From here it would be a 50-yard field goal. They don't have a field goal kicker with that kind of leg. Curtis Ansel comes in to try to pin him inside the 15 or 10-yard line. Kicks it very high. Perfect. Absolutely ideal. How about five seconds of hang time? Wow. And out of bounds at the three. Curtis Might take Phillip eight plays this time. <laughs> Curtis Ansel the senior out of Kansas 18th kick inside the 20 long field for Philip Rivers who's two possessions two touchdowns a lot of offense thus far in the Mazda Tangerine Bowl four possessions three touchdowns NC State leading 14 to 7 here in Orlando the Wolfpack have had it for 10 plays and three minutes they have 132 yards and 14 points. First down, Philip Rivers. Rolls away to gain about a yard or so. Corey Kipp ran him out. Guys, when we uh, first saw Philip Rivers back in his freshman year, he's a uh, true freshman from Athens, Alabama, Auburn and Alabama country. He's had great postseason games on his way to another one here tonight. He's kind of tall, lanky. It didn't really look like he was a great athlete, but boy, he has gotten stronger, taken better care of his body, and uh, has at six foot five the frame that he's developed into a better athlete here over the last couple of years. Certainly ready for the NFL next year. Second and eight. That hair trigger release. So Richard Washington has been a very busy man. Two touchdowns already tonight. Yeah, because he's a little unconventional with his delivery, I think it's been a knock on him. I think people have looked at him and questioned whether or not he has the arm strength. A lot of times I've heard people say he's a Danny Warfel type of guy because he's a, he's, a, he's a guy who's very accurate and he'll put the ball down the money. But I think, as Mike, as you said, he has changed right before our eyes in these last three or four years. Like everybody, he's become more physical. He's become quicker. His release has become more quicker. I I think his arm is a lot stronger this year than it was in his previous three years. Third and a couple, five options to throw. Flag comes down as Pottery picked up the first down at the 28. If it stands at 17 yards, let's see what the call is. 17 yards hurt his average? <laughs> Rivers? Yeah. Uh, no, no, that'll help it. That'll help. Yeah. Okay. Seven for eight for 117. Okay. It's on Kansas. Holding on the defense. Penalty decline. First down. 
You know, after Phillip threw for 422 yards and four touchdowns in that 50 to 44 overtime loss against Florida State, Bobby Bowden said this quote. Philip Rivers is the best football player in the nation, period. Mm -hmm. Now, that was one hell of a compliment on Philip Rivers from Bobby Bowden, the winningest coach in the history of college football yep. division winning. And, you know, Lee, there are a lot of people oh. who are out there who have or North Carolina State fans to say he should have been at the Heisman, he should have been the best player. You know what? If they would have won a few more games along the way, I think everybody else would agree with Bobby Bowden's statement. What a throw there. Is that caught? Yes, that's Cotchery. Oh. That is his fourth on the night at pickup 13. He is one catch away uh, from a record mark at North Carolina State. You're also seeing a, a different Phillip Rivers this year because they've moved him around a lot more. This goes back to what we talked about, how hard he's worked on his body and, and trying to become quicker. Look at the bootlegs. Noel Milzoni, who was the offensive coordinator at Mississippi with Tommy Tuberville and then Auburn as well, has brought this package in to go along with what Norm Chow and Mike Canales did last year. And I think you're seeing them exploit and take advantage of a, a, a completely different style quarterback now in Philip Rivers. McClendon runs up the middle, gets out to the 40, six yard line, pick up of about six. Jerry Punch, Jericho Cotchery closing in on a record. Indeed he is, Michael. You know, they call him Jayco, but his initials, he should be called Jay Clutch. He entered tonight with 187 career receptions, and what a clutch receiver. 123 of those were for first downs or touchdowns. 58, a third of his total receptions for his career were third down conversions. He is definitely Mr. Clutch. He needed four to come in tonight to tie Torrey Holt, the great receiver in the NFL, and he has now tied Torrey. The next catch, he becomes the all-time record holder at NC State Wolfpack history. Might come here. Second and four. Play pass. Rivers throws. Oh, it almost came there. They got to Rivers and hit him. Thanks, Floodman, the linebacker, knocked down Rivers, and NC State will face third and four. It's the first time Kansas brought pressure, and they finally got to Phillip Rivers. You see the linebackers are coming, and this is what it takes. Floodman not giving up, coming right through that fake reverse and getting the pressure on Phillip Rivers. Otherwise, that's another big completion for North Carolina State. Ed Franks Floodman is a captain and only a sophomore on the football team. That's quite an honor right there. Four yards, distance between the red line and the yellow line. Rivers, first down to the 43-yard line for Tremaine Hall. See, now, and I understand it's third down, but it's not third and, and 12 or 15. They're going to rush three and drop eight. And it, Phillip Rivers is too accurate, and you're giving him too much time. Eventually, his receivers get into the bubble, and Rivers is going to anticipate it and put it right in the hole. They go very quick. Toss to Hall out of the backfield. Got a block. A couple yards shy of the first down. Pick up of eight for Tremaine, who carried it 33 times this year. He, he touched it 125 times a game. So he averaged about 100 yards each of the 12 Wolfpack games. I think Tremaine Hall has been a, a player that's helped this offense because of the inconsistencies with T.A. McClendon and all the injuries. Hall's been a guy you can line up at receiver, you can line him up in the backfield. They've and this is an offense that I think has tried to take advantage of his versatility as well. They're going no huddle here. Keep Kansas from their substitutions. Quarterback draw with River. <laughs> Out to the 28-yard line. That gets him a first down. Here's the 209 mark. Quick second. They'll move the chains. We'll sneak in a promo tonight. After our game, Bobby Knight and Texas Tech home to take on his former star players, Steve Alford and Iowa. And they'll be in Lubbock coming up at 90 Eastern 6 Pacific tonight on ESPN. There they are. Knight and Alford. It was Alford, the captain of the 87 Indiana team. They cut down the nets in the Superdome in New Orleans, winning the national championship, beating Syracuse on the Keith Smart shot oh, on yeah. March 30 of 87. Yeah, that was <laughs> Not a, that we're keep, you're yeah. keeping track. I remember that night very well. I guess you do. A corner yeah. shot, too. Oh, oh, he was the fading. The toughest fading shot to the in basketball he had to make. They like. denied Alford the ball, yes, which was the... That's right. Jim Beheim told his guys, do not let Alford get the shot. That's they right. wouldn't. 
And uh, Smart took the shot. Indiana won the championship. 16 years later, Syracuse won a championship in that building. So it all That's evened it. out. Juice. Big orange. <laughs> NC State took a timeout here. There's Noel Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator. Philip Rivers, you see all those 17 jerseys? It's really neat. And talking about his four years and the impact of everything that's happened to him, he said one of the neatest feelings he had was after his sophomore year, he's up at the mall with his wife, they're shopping, and there next to the Mike Vick jerseys are the Red 17 jerseys in kid sizes, adult sizes. And he was taken aback by it. And now you go to Raleigh, and there are so many 17 jerseys on kids and grown-ups. It's a really neat story. Also, if you go to Columbus, Ohio, there's a lot of number fours for our partner right here, Kirk Herbstreit. Did you notice that? Not Archie. They don't have, you know, Archie Griffin. None of those guys. They have Kirk Herbstreit, number four. I might get that for my wife for Christmas. I wonder what I get. Oh, good, good, good stuff. The chief up north. Okay. Here's Doc. Excuse okay, me, Doc. Thanks. thanks. Hey, guys, when Chuck Amato took the job, he asked the guys an hour after he made the announcement, who are our recruits? He said, well, you got this kid, Rivers, uh, out of Alabama. He's slow. His footboard is awkward. He has an ugly, ugly release, but uh, he's very accurate. He gets rid of it in a hurry, and he's a winner. Chuck Amato said, you know what? That's Danny Werfel. He won a national title and a Heisman Trophy. I got to go get him. He got on a plane and signed Philip Rivers. Play action for Rivers on first down. Looking down the middle, it's caught by T.J. Williams, the tight end. Takes it inside the two. It'll be first and goal for State. Uh, I think Phillip Rivers is feeling it right about now. It's one thing to have guys open. It's another thing to put the ball right on the money every single time. And this is a great route here by Williams. Fakes to the inside, completely loses Tony Stubbs, the safety. And they're very, very lucky that that didn't go all the way for a touchdown. That T.J. Williams, 6'4", 236, and moved like an inside receiver. Yep. Phillip Rivers understands offense as well as any other quarterback in the nation. Funny huddle. They kept oh. it in the middle and sneak it in for the touchdown. So NC State threw the hard curve there and snapped it to McClendon, who picks up his eighth rushing touchdown of the year. It is 20-7. to seven. It was almost like there were two quarterbacks on the play in the formation. That's a play to put in for the bowl game. Yeah. See, that Amato learned that from Bobby Bob. Always put in gimmick plays in the bowl game because kids love it. He snaps it to Rivers, and then you know, T.A. McClendon's just hiding underneath the offensive line right behind him. He slipped it between his legs. What was that the uh, Florida State-Clemson game? Like back in Pan Ruski. Yeah, Pan Ruski. Which is no longer no legal. No longer legal. That's Thank right. You. So now we just do it with the fullback. Hiker the extra point. That was an 11 play. 97-yard drive. North Carolina State has 229 yards in three possessions. Look at this. Who's the quarterback? There's Rivers between the legs to McClendon. NC State Hoop fans love that pass. Hello, I'm Jim O'Sullivan, President and CEO of Mazda North American Operations. On behalf of the entire Mazda team who work every day to produce cars that are fun to drive, we are excited to be part of the 2003 Mazda Tangerine Bowl. Today's teams come from two of the most storied conferences in college football, the ACC and Big 12, with two high-octane offenses in the North Carolina State Wolfpack and the Kansas Jayhawks. We believe the 2003 Tangerine Bowl will have all the excitement of a top-down drive on a windy road. So buckle up and enjoy these two great teams attempting what we strive for every day at Mazda the perfect drive. Well, there is the sophomore, T.A. McClendon, who just punched it in from a yard out on the little trick formation. To make it a 21-7 NC State lead. Kiker's kickoff is uh, short but high. Randall had a couple of nice returns from the eight. Takes it out to the 27-yard line. Spilled by J.J. Jones, the backup rover. We should mention that Kiker's doing kickoffs because John Durani, the uh, normal kickoff man, freshman out of Georgia, had to go back home with his grandfather taking ill. Durani, a very good kickoff man, had... Um, a tough uh, touchback almost 60 percent of the time this year so Whittemore in Kansas get it back they scored once had a punt on their last possession Clark Green the sophomore from here in Tampa fighting to gain about a yard it'll be second and nine 
We mentioned this is Kansas's first bowl game in eight years. Go back to 1995 and the Aloha Bowl when Glenn Mason was the coach of the Jayhawks. They beat UCLA 51 to 30 in that game. Remember, Glenn Mason was going to Georgia right after that ball game. Went to Georgia and came back home. Right. And then eventually went to Minnesota, Minnesota, where he's got the Gophers program turned around. Minnesota will play in the Sun Bowl against Oregon. To Green, his 42nd reception of the year is a first down. Out to the 44, Richard freshman Pat Lowry stopped him after a gain of 15. Speaking of Clark Green, he has the most receptions. That's 42 than any other back in the history of Kansas. An outstanding football player at 5'11", 205 from Tampa, Florida. Got good-looking athletes over there. That's one thing you notice when you look at the Kansas roster. There are players from all over the country playing on this football team. That's why this game is important for them. A rare national TV appearance for KU. Could be the final play of the longest first quarter ever. Green. Going to gain about a yard, and that'll bring us hey. to an end. Got there. It's been good, though. Oh, that's good. 40, it's a lot of fun. 44 plays. 17 white. Killing him out there. 44 plays, 364 yards, and four touchdowns. Two of them caught by Richard Washington. 21 7 NC State at the 2003 Mazda Tangerine Bowl. The 2004 ESPN Sports Almanac, a perfect holiday gift. of LA are not as dangerous as you think. They're worse. The most insane driving game. The most ruthless fighting game. The most lethal shooting game is one sick game. True Crime Streets of LA. Rated M for Mature. Xbox. It's good to play together. You sit them in child safety seats. Chase them away from wall plugs. You don't let them swim without a buddy. Or until an hour after they eat. You bundle them when it's cold. And come the instant they call. And if they ever need you, you'll always be there. Well, maybe not always. If you can't quit smoking for yourself, maybe you can for them. course of a home project, you find yourself stuck without a way to go on. Think Dremel Rotary Tool. With over 150 available attachments and accessories, there's virtually no jam that a Dremel Rotary Tool can't get you out of. Hey, Ron. When you think it can't be done, think Dremel. Quarter number two of the 2003 Mazda Tangerine Bowl. State by 14 as quarter two starts with a second and nine for Kansas. At their own 45. Bill Whittemore will keep it on a designed run and pick up the first down at the 43 yard line. A.J. Davis, the red shirt freshman, made the tackle. Now, the Bola Wines ESPN game track. NC State has been a smooth Chardonnay. Three of three, two touchdown passes from Rivers to Washington. The other one was a run at the back end of a 97-yard drive. Meantime, on the opening drive of the game, it was a touchdown pass to Charles Gordon, the freshman out of Carson, California. We've had 22 first downs on 45 plays. That is obscene defense. Whittemore is supposed to be a shovel pass to Gordon. He wasn't there. 
so Whittemore ended up keeping it. See Whittemore slow to get up? That happens a lot. He's got a little that Jim Brown last guy off the pile. I, I know that North Carolina State's young up front. Five of their top eight defensive linemen are, are freshmen. I know it's been a tough year in that regard. They've had some, some things to deal with in the secondary. But again, the amount of man-to-man -man coverage that this defense plays is astounding to me. It's so different from what most teams are doing. Whittemore's throw is caught by Brandon Rideau. A couple yards shy of a first down. Third and about, well, see, the spot's pretty pretty generous. I think it's going to be third and less than a yard. You know, in the mid-90s, you remember when Florida State played Florida and mm -hmm. Danny Warfel got hit several times by Peter Bulwer and oh, Andre yeah. Wadsworth. They, that was the game they set the Wilson. tape, right? Right. Yeah. Well, that was a team. That was a, and the year Nebraska beat Florida where they brought more than Danny Warfel and the Florida offense could handle. That was very trendy then to just play straight man and put a safety in the middle of the field and bring more than they can handle. You don't see teams still doing that except North Carolina State. Third and one, they try power football, and Green is stopped that time by Freddie Autry Lindsay. Try, you got to go for it. Yeah, guaranteed you got to go for it. Because you might not get the ball again without the other team scoring. It'll be 28 what 7 when you get it. Well, the last time you left it down in a two, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah, you got to go for it. I called Autry Lindsay. Oliver Hoyt made that first hit, and Hoyt and Clark Green, 22 in white and 30 in blue have been best buddies since Pee Wee football days in Tampa. See if they meet again here. No, it's option. It's Winnemore, and it's first down. The block came from the fullback, Austin Wabusi. And the drive stays alive. The only reason I bring that up is even Florida State, will Chuck Amato learned that, even they're playing more zone now. All over the country, you're seeing teams sprinkle in more and more zone. This time on fourth and short, obviously, you're going to put the ball in the hands of your quarterback. He's the most versatile and most athletic guy that you have, and he comes up with a first down. But, you know, they, they live and die by it. They leave their corners out in an island and hope they hold up. 23 first downs, 49 plays. Remember, when you're tracking first downs, a touchdown counts for a new first down as well. Whittemore, a pump, a deep toss for Simmons. Deflected away by Devontae Edwards, who started three games in 2003. He was a uh, wide receiver when last NC State was here in the 2001 Tangerine Bowl loss to Pittsburgh. That was a nice play by Devontae Edwards. He's one of the few guys from North Carolina on the defensive secondary. Kirky has three of those four defensive backs are from the sp sure. speed state of Florida. He's trying to get the guys. Five of the back seven are from the state of Florida. Yep. Chuck Amato's going to the right place oh, to get yeah. those players. Right now, they're young. Yeah, they're, they're going to get better. They'll they're get better. better. But Edwards showed his background of playing a receiver by finding the football there. That was a great play. Not sure if that was confusion with John Randall in the game. Whatever it is, it sends Whittemore to the deck thanks to Freddie Autry Lindsay. A loss of four on the play. Randall, who's a freshman who's been playing both offense and defense, had one of his offensive snaps there, and there seemed to be confusion. One of the things also that I think that that uh, Chuck Amato's got to do in a springtime. I think he's got to name a defensive coordinator. He's one of the few coaches in America that doesn't have a defensive coordinator. He's got a line coach, a corner coach, a safety coach, and then a linebacker coach, and no defensive coordinator. I think he's got to do that, Mike. I just, I just hope whatever he does, he sprinkles in a little bit of zone in the offseason. <laughs> Third and 14. They bring five. Whittemore has time. Intercepted. Two receivers got in each other's way, and uh -oh. A.J. Davis has some blockers. He's on the way. Whittemore knocked him out of bounds. On the Kansas side of the field at the Jayhawk 39. 47-yard return for Davis, who had his other pick of the season against the Buckeyes in Columbus. Well, that time, yeah, he, was, had, he had time to throw. I think there was just confusion with the receivers downfield. He must have listened to you. They're in a zone defense. Yeah, they you sat see? back that time <laughs> on third and long. And You don't think they're listening to you. They, they could be. They I mean, it's the next door to us. They, yeah. Look at they're playing zone. They sit back. Perfect. I, I do know it helps the defense when one receiver bumps the other receiver yeah. off his route. Yeah, That's that, not good, though. That's, no. No, no, not good. 15, John Richards in the game. Every time he's been in the game, they've run the ball. This time they fake the run. Rivers to McClendon, leaks out of the backfield. 
to the 17. Pickup of 22. Well, let me tell you, I don't know who's calling the plays, if it's Manzoni or if it's Phillip Rivers, but I'm telling you, this is an offense in rhythm, Kirk. It's one of the best-looking offenses I've seen this year for keeping you off balance. This is a clinic, Phil. I'm and telling it, you. Th this is one that you want to you want to show in the offseason that people are going to want to come to rally oh. now to try to learn this offense and how does it work? Wow. And you know this isn't a this isn't an accident. I mean they, they yeah. finished the, the second half of the season on fire offensively. In the red zone again from the 17. It's McClendon again. Pick up a six. Second and four coming up. Sid Bachman made the tackle. The other thing that we continue to talk about as he limps off the field yeah. <laughs> is having T.A. McClendon in there and having him healthy. I was shocked when Chuck Amato said that because of the injuries, the last 10 weeks of the regular season, he did not practice one time full contact on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Wow. This, this, this bull preparation, he had 15 days of practice where they beat him up. They scrimmaged, they took off the yellow jersey, and they went after him, and they thought it was going to help him be prepared for tonight. Backfield is empty. Rivers on the throwback to the lineman. Locklear. Me? First down Are you to the me? five. Sean Locklear. First team all ACC lineman. <laughs> A penalty marker. Apparently down on the play, although it's okay. They are talking about it. It was a lateral. I, don't, I can't believe he didn't throw that. Throw it back to Rivers there from the big five. And Rivers is explaining to the officials. He's helping everybody tonight. Illegal block in the back is called here on NC State. Yeah. That's what that when a lineman catches it, you got these receiver guys trying to block. Take away Sean Locklear's. Uh... We got to show his moment, though. I don't care if it's a penalty or not. <laughs> you just have to show the big guy moving out here and, and showing what kind of athletic ability he has. What's the ladder, right? Nice. That's what I'm saying. I'm waiting for him to throw it. But oh, there's the back. Leroy Harris, the guy right next to yes. the guy Come you line up next Harris. to. Jealous. Freshman. One thing about Locklear, graduated December the 17th. One of the three guys that they have that graduated, including Phillip Rivers. They got some good players there, but he also yep. do a good job academically. Most impressive thing about what he did is moving to tackle after the season-ending injury to Chris Colmer. NC State trying to go four possessions, four touchdowns. Into the boundary with McClendon. Here comes another flag as T.A. gets taken down inside the 10. Yeah, I'd say he stopped. Just help them add to their yardage. Slow him down. Yeah. Slow him down. Noel Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator, were talking to us yesterday, and he said that they were definitely, I mean, like it or not, they were going for the all-time record here <laughs> for the Tangerine Bowl. So he said, hold on. We're going to go for it. So we've been trying to chart it for you and see how old Phillip Rivers is doing. The record is by King Cliff Kings Kingsbury yeah. last year when we were here. Texas Tech. Yep. And they're throwing all over the map offense. Oh, man. Hey, you know what? B.J. Simmons came into that game late and threw it all over the place. Really? Just stole some of the yards. There it is. Kingsbury, that's right. Right. He, he's after him. Oh, what, he's 90s? all over him. Are you kidding me? He'll catch him. 464. We're going to keep you abreast, so don't turn your television off. We'll see how Philip Rivers does. That'll be a good spend of your time on a Monday night. Second down. Rivers going up top for his tight end. Oh. Nearly a spectacular catch. By T.J. Williams, the sophomore, he is an honorable mention All ACC player. Remus Johnson on the coverage, but Williams had an injury-filled rookie season. Came on for 27 catches, averaged 15 a game this year. It'll be great to have a good tight end for a new quarterback, and that's what State will have next year. Uh, he's a future superstar, yeah. really is. When you talk to Philip Rivers, he's been as pleased with T.J. Williams' development this year as anybody else on this offense. And his size, 6'4", 236 pounds, and he can get upfield in a hurry for a big guy. 20 for the first down, 27 for a touchdown. Pressure or coverage? Ring four drops some linemen. McClendon screen. Uh, we got one block. Unable to get inside the 20-yard line. So we're looking at about a 39-yard Kiker field goal attempt, if that's the way they go. Oh, they didn't score a touchdown. There you go. 
Gotta start somewhere. That's it, I'll tell you. Well, I haven't scored a touchdown yet. You never know if there's a fake up their sleeve. The way they're calling plays tonight. <laughs> no, no, just you don't know. Yeah. Just, no, I just you never know. Chris Young holds for Tiger, who uh, struggled towards the back end of the season. Had a good overall year. This is a 41 yarder. What win there is behind him. No good. All right, he stopped it. So KU holds NC State. And the lead is 14. Kansas ball when you come back. Well, Chris Young, the holder, it's all teamwork when you miss a field goal, and maybe Young was the guy responsible there. Well, you're supposed to hold the ball with one finger. See, he's got his hand over there, but that's no excuse. Look, there's enough football yeah, there to kick he it. The ball. He tilted the ball right, there and he here. Is out. Watch, now watch the kicker. Well, he wasn't very happy. No, he wasn't very happy. Whittemore, the quarterback, the first down toss is Gordon. Made a man miss. And got it out to midfield. Okay, good. Gordon. Charles Gordon, very good there. A pickup of 27 yards. You know, we're talking up here and talking up here, but you know the interesting thing to me? It's only 21-7. Yeah, it is. It this should is. be like 58 to 2. The way it looks like Florida's, you know, North Carolina State's moving the football, but I'll tell you what, they're back in it. Kansas is they're throwing the football. I mean, they're, they're having some success. They just that last last sequence of plays really hurt. Them. The team in white is 116 out of 107. You know, their offense is ridiculous. But the, 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 the NC State defense, they'll keep Kansas around. Gordon shake it up on the play. First and ten. Option with the other freshman, John Randall, the shiftier of the running backs, is pulled out of bounds. Back at the 48, where he was dragged out. Well, let's take a look at our AOL rushing matchup for the season. The little yellow guy running the ball there. NC State, 49th in the nation. Kansas in the uh, bottom quadrant in terms of rushing. I'm Kansas. I'm just going to run. Continue to sit back in that shotgun with Whittemore. Mix in an occasional option against the man coverage and then throw all day one on one against these defensive backs. Second and eight. Whittemore sees pressure. Nice job getting out of it. And he keeps uh, playing. It looked like a loss of five. Uh, very much alive. And he'll have third and about four yards coming up. And he again comes up limping. Oliver Hoyt made the tackle. Yeah, Mark Mangino told us this yesterday. He says, it, it is full out. You, you think, boy, up, he's hurt. And the guys are the coaches of the headset are saying, trainer, trainer, Whittemore's hurt. Guys, got, ah, he's okay. He's hurt. Okay. He's hurt. That's Chris Perry this year. Chris Perry had that in him. He got an extra 15 so seconds toughness. per play in the Ohio State game, right? <laughs> when Michigan oh, had the lead. Trainers are running. They're halfway out now. He's back up. He's good. Third and four to keep this drive moving. Pass complete to Rideau. So Brandon Rideau out of Beaumont, Texas, second on this team this year with six touchdown catches. It's a very active night. Five grabs over 50 yards. Three receivers to the field, third down play. And, and as soon as Whittemore saw the man-to-man -man coverage, he looks the safety off to keep him on the hash just for a second, giving his receiver enough time to get off. Because I'll tell you, Lamont Reed did a good job of taking away the inside, and it took a little bit of time for Rideau to finally get in there. But Whittemore held on patiently and got, got him the football. Good numbers for Whittemore. Option. He got hit, but got rid of it to Clark Reed, who got it out to the 30 to pick up three yards Mario Williams off the end had to stick on the quarterback then Autry Lindsay the junior out of High Point North Carolina cleaned it up remember this Kansas offense averaged 29 points per game in the Big 12 and conference pretty good football teams and defensively and as long as Whittemore is healthy and being able Kirk and Mike to run the option throw the inside stuff and every once in a while a little draw they got a chance to keep moving on sure. it because North Carolina State is not a great defensive team and that's being nice they, they, they'll move the ball all night oh. tonight with this package with this quarterback from the 30, it is second down. A marker is down as Whittemore's throw for Gordon, who's back in the game, was hot. The problem is, can they score? I mean, they're going to move the football. Yeah. They're going to be able to punch it in and, and get come up with six points. Offside will make it second and short. 
Well, we mentioned Capital One Bowl Week starting tonight, continuing tomorrow night in Amen Carter Stadium, the Plains Capital Fort Worth Bowl, number 19 TCU, number 16 Boise State. Your coverage begins with College Game Day presented by Outback Steakhouse at 7 Eastern, then kickoff at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central Top. For more, log on to ESPN. Dot com. You've got a great preview of every one of the games on Capital One Bowl Week and on through the BCS. Uh, they're on ESPN.com, the College Football Bowls page. Second and two. Whittemore has some room to run. Got there with the fake and got the first down. The use of the pump fake can be very effective, and it was there. Well, we talked about uh, Capital One Bowl Week. You'll see many Big 12 teams next Monday night, and that's at 9 o'clock Eastern. There's no Monday night football game next week, so settle in for your Monday night football with Michigan State and Nebraska in the MasterCard Alamo. Texas Tech plays Navy. Wazoo against Texas in the Pacific Life Holiday. You guys will have a great time out there in San Diego, as uh, we have the last few years. Ole Miss will take on Oklahoma State and the two teams in the bowl championship series K State Ohio State in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Oklahoma LSU in the Nokia Sugar Bowl the BCS title game option Clark Green inside the 15 to the 10 yard line that's a pickup of eight yards it's pretty obvious what Chuck Amato has told his defensive ends. If they see Whittemore, who's been banged up all year, coming on the option, take him out. And that's what Demario Williams is doing. But it works to the advantage because Whittemore is ready for that, delivers the pitch, and all of a sudden you pick up eight yards by pitching it out to Clark Green against, again, man coverage on the perimeter. Yeah, there's a nice block by Charles Gordon. That kid is playing offense, defense, running, and everything else. He made the block that allowed that man to make that yardage. Good play, Charles Gordon, number three. Williams lines up to come at Whittemore again. In there on the run tackle as he gets to Clark Green with no gain on the play. Mario Williams, a freshman All-American, long arms, 6'7", 254, started every game this year, had 12 tackles for loss, and when you talk about the future being bright with young athletes up front, he's one of them, probably the main one for Chuck Amato. Freshman All-American sporting news again. Mm -hmm. Yep, beautiful specimen, and they are young up front. They're only going to get better and better. Third and two in what has been a scoreless second quarter. Whittemore kept it on the option, and that play was well read and contained by James Martin. A little fourth down coming up. Uh, got to go for it. No, I think you got to get some points, Kirk. Points, I see. Yeah, I, I think you got to get some points psychologically to, to cut it from a from a 14 to only 11. You think they're going to stop Philip? No, but you got to get some points. I got to call my dad. The man just got unseated. Hey, Dad. Yeah, it's T. Yeah, I just had a burger at Sonic, and it's the best burger I ever had. Yeah, better than yours. But it's no reflection on the, you as a man. Fresh made to order. Sonic does it, others don't. It's Sonic good. Disciplined investing. At T. Rowe Price, it's not just about the short term. It's about a steady, long-term approach. Over 75% of our mutual funds beat their three, five, and 10-year lipper averages. A disciplined, long-term approach. Low-cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. It's finally here. SWAT on DVD. Let's try to get in the killing mode. I am in killing mode. So why are you smiling? Because it tickles me. Get the DVD loaded with action-packed special features. I'm starting to like this already. SWAT. Buy it December 30th on Special Edition DVD. Inside that robot is something familiar. A battery. And while you may think all batteries are the same, listen to this. It's just the rain, but with his Phonak hearing aid, he's hearing it for the first time. And when Phonak chooses the battery, they trust Duracell. You heard the rain. So whether it's a child's hearing or child's play, it just has to work. Duracell, trusted everywhere. And 
I don't even have that insurance. No. My insurance, Santa? The one that pays you cash if you're hurt and can't work. Huh? Ah! Ah! Aflac, ask about it at work. Can you just send out the toys? Could contingent be the uh, trip from large here for the Mazda Tangerine Bowl. KU's first bowl game in eight years. They're going to go for it here on fourth and about three in North Carolina State. Seeing what Kansas will do takes a timeout. Plus two basketball rich tradition schools. Why not uh, see what they're going to do on offense and take a timeout to set up your defense. When you think about it, both of these schools have followed a similar path. Schools with unbelievable basketball tradition who have hired the assistant coach off a championship team, a model Florida State, Mangino, Kansas State, and Oklahoma especially, to turn them into hopefully football success. Before fourth down, let's visit with Chris Fowler, see what the guys have cooking for halftime. Well, Mike, thank you. We're going to talk about TCU and Boise State. When Corso says he would pay, to watch the game, it's going to be a good game. We'll talk about that one. We'll talk about things I want for Christmas for college football, Mike. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about things I would like to give for Christmas. He's in a giving mood. Give. All right. Plus other sports news and notes. The Knicks look into Isaiah Thomas to rescue them from their current predicament. All coming up at halftime, guys. We hope you'll stick around and join us. <laughs> we absolutely will. Chris, we'll see, we'll see what the guy's wish list there is. For, I want to hear Fowler's wish list, too, for Christmas. Coming up here at halftime. 21-7, NC State. On top of Kansas, of course, in this stadium, we'll have the uh, Capital One Bowl on New Year's Day. Great game. We love Jack the Capital One Bowl. Fourth and three. Uh, <laughs> Whittemore adjusting the play. Ten guys in a box here. He's trying to pull it off. Side. You're going to get your field goal, Lee. I hope so. This, this is not a second guess. you got to get points. So there we go. We've had three timeouts without a play. <laughs> it's terrific stuff, huh? So, that's good stuff. Can't have more entertaining TV. Green Bowl, presented by Mazda. There's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. In part by City Identity Theft Solutions. Free help getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. By Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. And by T. Rowe Price, invest with confidence. Back in the land of uh, Mickey, here in Orlando, Jared Brooks on to try a 28-yard field goal. And after the three timeouts, three points, 21-10. NC State lead 11, the first points of this second quarter. That was a good call by Mancioni because what it does is it peps that sideline. Look at, see, look at the sideline. They're all jumping around. It's only three points, but it's something to build on right. at halftime. That's my opinion. That's good morale I'm builder, right? Well, you know something. what? They stopped North Carolina State the last time because North Carolina State stopped themselves. Right. Maybe, just maybe, North Carolina State will get a little greedy now and they can sneak around and you never know. But I like that. Very good call by Manzoni and his staff. Well, Phillip Rivers will come back on the field for North Carolina State. So much has happened for Phillip Rivers. Number 17 retired by NC State. It happened before the last game in Raleigh. Philip, as we showed you the pregame, family man. His uh, daughter's now 17 months. Is a junior high school sweetheart, Tiffany. And Tiffany and Hallie, his daughter, were there as uh, Philip's number 17, wearing the cap for graduation, was uh, retired before the game against Maryland, the final game at Carter Finley Stadium, which they ended up losing by two. Woo, woo. You're right, Lee. Got the field, field goal, goal now. They're ready. You think they're ready to hit? I'm telling you, 31. Derek, 6'3, 215 pounds from Overland Park, Kansas. I mean, that's a Sports Center shot. Listen, listen to this one. 
I don't understand why, why he's on a sideline. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why you sign up for the kickoff cover oh. team right there. Put him in the game. First and ten for State. And Rivers to our country underneath. A record catch takes Jericho out to the 33-yard line. More catches than any receiver in the history of North Carolina State football. With that one right there for Cotcher. And again, a player who throughout his career has not only been blessed with physical ability, but he's a hard worker, relentless. Phillips said it's to the point now where he just looks. They just give each other eye contact and make an adjustment to a route without even saying anything verbally. He broke Torrey Holt's record, 192 receptions. Inside handoff with McClendon. And T.A.'s just shy of the 40-yard line. So Jericho Cotchery, who's had a catch in a record-tying 39 consecutive games, passes the, and you can't say great with Torrey Holt, the great NC State receiver who's moved on to the St. Louis Rams. Injured player for Kansas, it's Gabriel Toomey, their middle linebacker, one of those three good sophomores in the middle, and he, too, is the quarterback of this KU defense. So this would be a really tough loss for Mark Mangino's team. Well, you know that Toomey's a player. He signed with Oklahoma and went to Oklahoma. <laughs> that <laughs> says it. Enough says right there. Although he didn't uh, stay, then he went to Iowa Central Junior College and came back now to play for Kansas. But if you sign and play on defense for Oklahoma, you can play anywhere. If you sign with Oklahoma to play defense, oh. that's all that matters. That's it. Well, guys, remind you, Thursday we have Christmas on... ESPN and ABC down here in Orlando the resurgent magic will take on LeBron James who's been off the charts good and Cleveland it's at 2 30 Eastern then over on ABC it's the doubleheader as we start our season on the home of the NBA Finals at 5 30 Eastern the pregame NBA hang time from Times Square then the Mavericks and Kings in game two Shaquille O'Neal and the LA Lakers take on Yao Ming and the Houston Rockets Christmas NBA ESPN first then the doubleheader on ABC Toomey helped off the field putting no weight on that right foot not a good looking sign for Kansas Rivers throws in the middle and it's caught by Clark Brian the sophomore out of Tampa with the grab and Kansas electing so often to sit back in a soft zone coverage and not putting enough pressure on Rivers, it gives him time, and it gives the receivers a chance to find those openings in, those, in, the, zone, in the zone that uh, Kansas is playing. First down, right around midfield. Showing corner blitz, picked up by Locklear, the left tackle, pass in the middle, the height of Clark brings it down. 14 yards on the game. That's the first time tonight that the receivers had to go up like yeah. that and, and make a catch. How about this? How about this vertical here by Brian Clark and a concentration to come up, come down with the football. 6'3, 198 from Tampa, Florida. The reason I like him, he caught six big ones against Ohio State. When you could do that, you're a good receiver. Rivers, 16 of 19. 200. Thank you, guys. 36 yards. 17 of 20. Oh. McClendon, his knee was down as Stubbs added the second big hit in the last two minutes for a KU defense trying to stop being trampled upon. Well, Tony Stubbs, I don't know if he knew the check from Phillip Rivers, but he, he was mirroring T.A. McClendon. As soon as T.A. went to the outside, he knew what was coming. They're lucky he wasn't closer to the line of scrimmage or he could have made an interception there. He was all over King on T.A. McClendon. Two plays, Kansas electing to bring a little bit more pressure. They brought five the last two times. You know what? They blew the whistle because they thought McClendon's knee was down. It, in fact, never did hit the ground. Second and 13. Again, the pressure. Again, McClendon. Again, Stubbs. See, at least now, Kansas, the last few plays here, they're dictating the tempo. They're being the aggressor on the defensive side instead of allowing NC State to do it. NC State timeout. McClendon is limping. And T.A. McClendon is once again, as uh, been said so often during NC State football games this year, 
he has shaken up. Well, while we have a second, during this timeout, we'll let you ponder this. What former all-conference Kansas quarterback went on to be the 1980 NFC Defensive Player of the Year with the Rams? Aflac Trivia question and answer coming up. T.A. McClendon walking on the sideline after that injury. Take a look after the hit from Tony Stubbs. Just watch his uh, ankles. As Stubbs tries to bring down the big 215 pounder. Mm -hmm. McClendon. I'm sorry, I was going to say, how many times have we seen T.A. McClendon in some kind of awkward position this year while getting tackled? Don't be sorry, it's exactly what I was going to say. Man. <laughs> Third and nine, they need to get to the 26 for a first down. Kansas showing some different things to Rivers. Let's see what they bring. Green, stay. Huh? Little mix. They rush four, they can't get there. The pass is caught by Clark. There's a first down and is inside the 15. They'll have it first and 10 at the 13. Make it the 12 yard line. was low Philip Rivers again trying to buy some time here and there's the zip on the football when he's able to settle in and get his feet underneath him puts it right in front of Clark and enough enough room there to pick up the first down. Yeah but you got to give the offensive lineman Paulson Harris Locklear McKeon and their coach Mike Berry a lot of credit that was a combination blitz and they picked it up nicely. McClendon back in the game Rivers has hit his last seven passes. Make it eight to Kotchery. Ball came out after he was down. A penalty marker's down. Back by Rivers. He was roughed. So take it from the six halfway to the goal. It'll be first and goal at the three. Roughing the passer mm. on the defense. Half the distance to goal. First down. But right, guys, we had the Affleck trivia question earlier. Now, the guys in the truck didn't want us to see this question this morning. They thought we'd have a tough time oh. answering it. Come on, this is easy. easy. Yeah. We do it in unison. Ready? One, two, two three. three. Knowing Cromwell. Cromwell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on, That was an easy one. What, what do they think? No. You think uh, we're a minor league operation up there? Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a trick question. Yeah. Because you guys were you guys yeah. were threatening me oh. in the meeting this morning. Don't look, they told me. Don't look. You don't, don't want to look. That's the four yard line. Come on. Right. First and goal from the four. Rivers play action. Comes back to McClendon. Touchdown. His third pass of the night. Pass complete to number 44, T.A. McClendon. Well. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I admit when I'm wrong, I said they should get up there. Man, Joni made a great call by going for the field goal, but I'll tell you what I do the second half. No more field goals. Thank you. No more. I was that's wrong. As, uh, I mean, that's yeah, okay. I mean, they can't stop nobody. 17's yeah. release for all I mean, the people that are going to evaluate him between now and oh. April. Please, we'll accept the awkward delivery and it's unorthodox, but don't question its quickness. Oh. He's got a quick release. Uh, Kiker adds the extra point, making it 28 to 10. McClendon catches a touchdown pass on that one. Rivers, 8 of 8 on the drive, 21 of 24 for three touchdowns in the first half. I swim the two. It's open field tackle at the 25 yard line by Stephen Tuck, the linebacker. Well, Philip Rivers. Is 21 of 24 for 268 yards and three touchdowns. It's been about as perfect that if you did his passer rating, it would be off the charts. If you look at your offense, it's a clinic. Oh, yeah, that's, I, it's beautifully organized and orchestrated and called and everything. I, I really think Noel Mozzoni needs to put this one away. Put this one in oh. a vault. And, and well, Phillip's already kicking back. You, you put it in the vault, and you, oh, when you want to yeah. go around and show people how to run offense, this might be the one you pull out. From the 25 here with little time left, they run it with Clark Green, busted it up the middle to the 47-yard line. Remember all the timeouts they used in that situation to kick the field goal. They have one remaining that they take here with 32 seconds to go. Let's see that. That's not the time you use your time. If you got one left, you pick up a first down, you get up to the line of scrimmage. It's unbelievable. 
21 of 24. 268 and three. Mike, you said it perfectly. He is, he should be the poster child for college football. Everything that is good about the sport is Phillip Rivers. Not a me attitude, a very team oriented guy, family guy, as we mentioned. Uh, his dad, a coach. Lee, you've been watching this number here? Oh, yeah. You guys stay there in the second half and watch this because let me tell you something. He's going to break this record. They will keep him in until he gets 465. I don't care what the score is. Now, Kansas might try to score here. If they try to get down the field with a long pass, I think we know who they're going to look for. Number three. Why? Because Charles Gordon, three different times this year, has caught Hail Mary plays. In the driving rain of the season opener in Lawrence against Northwestern, he went up and got one, which eventually led to a field goal. One that ended up being a touchdown in the wild score, a 50-47 overtime loss to Colorado. And then he had a third later on in the season. Here's Whittemore up top. It's not Gordon, but it's almost caught by Mark Simmons. They almost hit the home run with the other deep threat down the field, Simmons. But the coverage was there from Victor Stevens, well, the nickelback. It was there, but the receiver got behind him. There's under 30 seconds to go in the half. The last thing you want to let happen is for Mark Simmons, who's their best deep threat, to get behind you. Yeah. And that time, North Carolina State allowed him to get behind him, and it was good recovery uh, by Victor Stevens. But get back. Get back, guys. The safeties need to get deeper. Second and 10, 25 seconds to go. Whittemore tries to get to the edge. He had time to throw it, but it was incomplete. Because of the pressure, he couldn't set up and get that one out to Gordon. We have third and 10 with 21 seconds left. Oh, this is a young North Carolina State defense. The next few years are going to get better and better. But I think the biggest thing that hurt North Carolina State this year is a lack of leadership with that youth. You didn't see that guy like... Thunder Dan Bur uh, Burnett, yep. uh, Torrance Holt. They had so many leaders last year. Terrence Martin up front. Those guys aren't here anymore. And I think that hurt this team when it was crunch time in some of those bigger games this year. Allen Holloway, Sheldon Lewin, a couple of veteran guys sent home from the bowl trip. That's where their leadership was. Screen to Green. Tracked down from behind. No timeouts left. It's fourth down. They're going to have to hustle here and throw the Hail Mary. by Carlin Pete. Garland Heath with the play. Got to hustle, guys. Yeah, shut her down. Yeah, shut her down for yep. halftime? Yep. Nope. Ah. Go for a field goal. Yeah. Uh, they don't have the length to make a field goal. I just, a little humor. Phillip Rivers, a great half, 268 yards, three touchdowns in the first half. And here's Jerry with Chuck Amato. Well, Coach Phillip Rivers and company putting on an offensive clinic here in the first half. There can't be anything I can think of you're not pleased with offensively. Two penalties down here on the goal line, which took us out of the score. We should have at least three more points. We can't. We, that, 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 there it was in the red zone again, inside the 10-yard line. We come away with nothing. How about defensively? Where do you look to slow them down? You've given up a lot of yards here on the defense in the first half. They can have all those yards they want. They got 10 points on the board. If we hold them to 10 in the second half, guess what? We're going to win. We're going to win. I, I, they can get all that stuff in there. We're getting a feel for their game. We're overrun on a lot of things. I think uh, we're, we're not really taking advantage of what, of what our speed is. Uh, but um, we got to get more heat on him. Okay, coach. Thanks a lot. Trying to get some pressure on Whittemore. And guys, not satisfied with the <laughs> offense in the first half. Well, you like, saw it. The penalties yeah. in the red zone again. Oh, they had 340 yards in the half. You know what's going on out there. Now the college football halftime report. And here's Chris Fowler. Quarterback could imagine only three incompletions, three touchdowns. As NC State has taken a 28-10 lead into the locker room. And Kansas will get the ball first here in the second half. Jericho Kotchery in that first half became the all-time leading pass catcher in NC State history, passing Torrey Holt. State looking to win this bowl game for the second time, even though it's uh, been a different name. This was the Micron PC Bowl, the CarQuest Bowl, uh, some other name of it. It was, uh, it was played in the Dolphin Stadium, but now it is the Mazda Tangerine Bowl. Here's Jerry. Doc? <laughs> Coach, what do you have to do in the second half to slow down this NC State offense? Well, you know, we let them score uh, 28 points in 12 minutes. That means we're making big plays in zone defense. We're letting them just lob the ball in the, in the holes and in the zone, and we're not contesting the ball. And uh, when we're a man and doing some blitzing, you know, we're just not being effective in our blitzes. So we've got we to keep at it and, you know, just keep fighting, keep slugging it out. 
and we've got to move the ball and get points in the end zone. We're moving the ball well, but we got to get in the end zone. Thanks, Coach. All right. Michael? Okay, Doc, thank you. Uh, Mark Mangino's been around some very good teams in Kansas State and Oklahoma, and the Kansas State situation, guys, is very similar to what KU faces here. You've got to rebuild it because it's been so far down for so long, other than a couple of good years Glenn Mason had and our colleague Mike Godfrey back in the mid 80s do you see the seeds here to turn this program around down the line yes I do and I think they got the right man to do it but I think also one thing they've got to improve their facilities yeah, they unless do. they recruit the top players with, with and you get facilities I think Kansas is going to have a hard time beating those Big 12 teams they got to get better facilities. Well, you're playing in the Big 12 oh, and you have Texas and Oklahoma and A&M and Nebraska and even Kansas State right down the road who yeah. are, are trying to improve every single year and if Kansas is serious about competing yeah. you don't only go out and hire a coach who's going to help you turn the corner you have to help him with resources in order to help in recruiting you help in recruiting you're going to have better personnel to go out and try to win games. Let's see what they can do here at half number two Randall takes in the kickoff and John tries to get to the outside. He's going to be brought down at the 21 yard line. Well, Philip Rivers will have to stay loose and watch his offense, his defense try to get him back on the field. We'll check the ESPN game track. Presented by Bola Wines. Rivers 268 and 3. Two of the touchdown passes to Washington in that first half. And as mentioned, only three incompletions. Meantime, NC State's defense, even though they gave up 243 yards, had a pick the only turnover of the game and uh, held Kansas to just a field goal after that opening drive. So as Rivers runs, Whittemore brings it out and gives it to Charles Gordon. First down and out of bounds at the 34. Gordon very close to a penalty marker as he was pushed out. But none was thrown. 14 yard gain add that to these T row price first half stats 27 plays of 10 yards or more in a first half that had 79 total plays well, for both these defenses it has been a long haul we knew coming in that both offenses had a chance to move the football who's going to put it into the end zone and so far that has been NC State see if Kansas can try to not only come up with yardage but points here in the second half. Whittemore's pass is deflected and incomplete. So a tight cover from A.J. Davis who has the only turnover of the night. He intercepted Whittemore in that first half. You guys mentioned facilities for Kansas and trying to rebuild this program and turn it around. They've hired uh, one of the best athletic directors in the country. Lou Perkins who was the athletic director at the University of Connecticut help give their basketball program the foundation men's and women's mm -hmm. to become national programs and spearheaded the building of that new football stadium that they sold out up there in uh, East Hartford this Amazing. year. Yeah and you kind of had a great season with a terrific coach in Randy Edson. Whittemore keeps he gets to the 40 we'll have third and five coming up and uh, Lou has uh, things in the works for Kansas football to try to get those facilities improved to get the coaches out of Allen Fieldhouse the great basketball yeah. arena get themselves a football only building because let's face it in the Big 12 with those Taj Mahals that you have in yeah. Oklahoma and Texas and A&M and every place else if you don't have it like you said Lee yeah. the kids yeah. come yeah. Can't keep Mark man Gino told us he had nothing that was his own mm -hmm. he had to share everything that's not good third and four they try the quick hit with Rideau made a couple of nice moves he'll be just shy of the first down. They needed to get a half yard more. Maurice Charles, the freshman defensive end, made the play. What do you want to do here, Coach? Oh, you got to go for it. Remember, I told you, no more field goals, <laughs> no more piles. <laughs> well, now you have to because yeah, you, you have to. Yeah, you know, there's no question. Well, when 17 gets the ball back, you know where the ball is going. It's going to the other end. I mean, I can't so believe it. I you're mean, already down 18. Against all odds, 98 yards, tonight. 80 yards. Not tonight. Two tight ends in the game with Lionel Anderson and Denver Lattimore in the backup. Whittemore sees what NC State lines up with and adjusts the play. Option. Pitches. Clark Green is the first down and more. 
Good call. Picked up 10 from the 45. The first thing you always hear when you watch a game is the quarterback changing the play. Well, so often, Kirk, they're just adjusting the play. It's check with me at the line of scrimmage. And that's what they had here. This was an option call all the way. He made the call to the right. He saw what he needed to have. Man to man on the outside. That's all you have to do is get a block to the outside just for a second from Simmons to give you enough room for Green to pick up several yards. And North Carolina State sold out up the middle. Kansas with a great call to get it to the outside. NC State very lucky that did not go the distance. That Clark Green averages 4-6. He's a good-looking sophomore who's in Tampa, Florida. Mark Simmons had the nice block, the wide receiver. First and 10, here is Mo Derrick Johnson. About nine yards. Manny Lawson had to come off the end to make the tackle. That's an interesting thing. We talk about Mo Derrick Johnson. We talk about Clark Green, one from Tampa, one from Texas. Mangiona. And Gino told us that he is definitely wants to get on Thursday night college football next season for national recruiting. That man knows exactly what he's doing. Not just any Thursday night football, yeah. but Thursday night football on ESPN. Well, Very, there's, there's only one Thursday well, it's night. It's us there. <laughs> yes, there is only. But I mean, he's you smart. Stop talking about yourself. No, but he's smart. No, he, he, he he's wants, smart because no, he's, he wants I'm to joking. recruit nationally, Mike. Yeah. He wants part of the package. I want to finish one thought about that. I'll give you time. Second and one, Whittemore looking for space. Keep it, you get the first down. There you go. Got a lot more, too. He's got the 20 and the 15. <laughs> 21 yard game. I like this kid. Tough and gutsy. Oh, yeah. yeah, good kid. Well, the, the thing that happens, I don't know how many times we have to talk about man-to-man -man coverage. And if you can play it, great. If you have exceptional corners and linebackers, great. Here's the problem, is that everybody oh. clears out, and there's nothing but a fairway for Whittemore to run right down the field and get all the way down inside the 20 down to the 15-yard line against that man pressure. But the problem there was really pad linebacker play. They were not on man from man coming. No. They were just sitting there, and all of a sudden, psh, the guy went right past them. Linebacker play by North Carolina State was not good on that play. First and 10 shovel pass to Charles Gordon. Nice dance away from two men. Lawson comes up to get him after a pickup of four. <laughs> Second and six coming up. First here is Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, the Jayhawks have been a very impressive team in the second half this year. Against UNLV, they were down at halftime and scored 23 unanswered points in the third quarter to win 46-24. Against Missouri, they were down at the end of three quarters and came out and dominated, scoring 22 unanswered points in the fourth quarter to beat a very good Missouri team for a 35-14 win. Hold on, folks. These Jayhawks play awfully well in the second half. And, Doc, that next week, Vegas went to Madison and beat Wisconsin. Second down, and Whittemore at season three. Oh, he oh, sold uh, it to Green! Nice. Touchdown! All right. Nice! <laughs> All right, Brett Farr. Brett Farr, Doug Flutie, Boston College. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah look back in his ball game. They sure are. That, that, that play just kind of epitomizes what uh, Bill Whittemore has meant to this Kansas yeah. football team. He's struggling. He's looking for something. He's trying to come up with a play. Sees his man, and the quickest way to get it there is just to option pitch it, which is legal, and a heads-up play by Green to be ready for that. But that is Bill Whittemore right there in a nutshell. Jared Brooks on to add the extra point. very often that both the touchdown pass and the extra point were, th were both end over end. <laughs> and both were good. 79-yard drive to Tampa's Clark Green. Try to become uh, one of uh, less than 10 running backs in KU history to hit 1,000 yards. Might not get there rushing-wise, but certainly a big pass reception to make this an 11-point game. Johnny Beck. There he is out of Kansas City. Kansas will kick it off. A couple of nice A.J. Davis kick returns tonight. Here he is from the nine. Freshman got hit once and got hit on this kick return as well. They're back inside the 10-yard line. That's two good special teams hit to the row. Clark McCracken with the crack on that. They are cracking on that kickoff cover still. They are. Well, fourth down, fourth down situation, fourth and one on the 44-yard line. And Whittemore runs the option play on an automatic play. And he makes a play on this scramble play right here. But the key play before he makes this big play was fourth down, and they gambled, and they had to go. There's a the touchdown. And it's important to remember he gambled deep. I mean, that, yeah, that, that was still, yeah, that was still yeah. a lot of work to be done there. But down 28 to 10, yeah. facing Phillip Rivers, you have to take some chances. 
First and ten. Here comes Rivers. Fake to the right. Come back to the left to Tremaine Hall. Takes it out to the 20-yard line. Pick up nine on first down. See, now it's very important for Bill Young, the defensive coordinator for Kansas, to put his pin his ears back on his defense, take some chances. You heard Mark Mangino talking to Doc coming back in the second half. We sit back and we play zone. They find the bubble, and Phillip Rivers puts it in there. They need to put more pressure, take some chances. What, what do you have to lose? You're going to sit back and keep playing zone and let Phillip Rivers dictate things? Take some chances and come after him. But the problem they have is they can't hit Phillip Rivers. If they're in man coverage, it's 60 yards. Boom, like that first drive. BBB. Well, I'd rather take a chance and play some man and pressure than sit back and get a slow death. McClendon keeps his balance, keeps his feet, holes into the secondary, out to the 38 yard line, a pickup of 18. It's nice to see him oh. healthy. It's just nice to see him back there, not limp after he gets up from a, from a carry. Everybody that's anybody that's talked about North Carolina State football has talked about the importance that this man brings to this offense. When you have a physical runner with great balance who's got a nose for the end zone like T.A. McClendon, it just helps the rest of your offensive package, which is built around Phillip Rivers. I thought it was interesting. Noel was only said, I'm used to an offense that's built around the guy that dotting the eye. Now it's an offense that's built around the quarterback play. First down. Swing out to Brian Clark, who's uh, hit hard and taken out of bounds at the 39 by Tony Stubbs. You mentioned Noel Mazzoni being used to having that great running back. He's thinking about the guys uh, he's had at Oregon State and Ole Miss and Auburn. He had you know, some great running backs, John Avery, Deuce McAllister, the great running backs at Auburn that he had. Uh, you know, now he moved over to NC State. He said, whoa. <laughs> it's an adjustment. He's got the guy. The problem is this is a pass first offense and McClendon's lack of health has not allowed them to develop a little stronger run game second and eight against a four-man rush all day to throw to Cotchery across midfield for another first down they're getting close to an average of 10 yards per play as uh, <laughs> Rivers has hit 12 consecutive passes we talked about uh, Chuck Amato and his staff he has nine assistant coaches and they average, listen to this, 30 years of coaching. The average. Hello. Boy, Manny Diaz kills I mean, that. I mean, he, Manny, <laughs> they got, he's he four years. That. They got guys 38 years, wow. 39 years. They average, Kirk, 30 yards yeah, that's in coaching. Nine guys. They are a piece to have. Chuck put together. Midfield, 13th straight completion, but this one will lose yardage. Richard Washington brought down by Banks Floodman, the sophomore linebacker, made the play. You guys mentioned Manny Diaz. He is the linebacker coach in now his fourth year as an assistant coach. He's a guy who we worked with back at ESPN. Uh, he was a production assistant on our NFL countdown shows back in the uh, early and mid-90s. A guy who didn't play college football, worked around the Florida State team, but has become an assistant coach. It's a rare thing to see in this day and age of football, but uh, a great example to those who have the dream to become a college football coach. Second and 13 after the loss of three. A 14th consecutive completion. Kachiri turning forward, laid it right on the yellow line, which he couldn't see, but it does mean a first down for State. I want to follow through on that staff situation because I think this is very, very smart on Chuck Amato. When he got this job, he went out and got those assistants. This is where he came from. The Pac-10, USC, Oregon State, the SEC, Arkansas, Tennessee, Pittsburgh, West Virginia, Florida State. You know what? All winning schools. Mm -hmm. Chuck Amato went out and got really good football coaches that know how to win. That's one right there, no. Yep, but he's Those lost are. some great assistants in the last three or four years, and he's replaced them with very good, good people. Team. Mike Barry, Noel Mazzoni on the offensive side this year alone. Look at that, guys. Nine and a half per snap. Might improve it. Up top. Clark. Touchdown. Four touchdown passes on the night for Phillip Rivers. He could be on his way to a bowl record for touchdown passes in a game. Well, this is a well-designed play. They've had so many different plays tonight. Faking and the, the fake the reverse, fake the TA. Now they're looking at TA for slipping out of the backfield, and right when they do, Brian Clark gets one-on-one -on -one coverage and goes right by the safety, Rodney Flower. Answer. 
No, answer, answer. How many times have you ever told me that? Seven plays it uh, took. Beautiful job by that quarterback. The answer. Oh, that's his accuracy on the ball. Can, he throw, can he throw the deep ball? And Kiker adds the extra point. Well, he's completed 15 in a row. 27 of 30. The record for touchdown passes in a bowl game by a quarterback is six. Ah, not he's big. got four. Uh-oh. And we got a quarter and a half to go. 35. Wonderful time of the year. Some of the kids singing over at the Magic Kingdom. I said kids, not AARP. Oh, okay. How can you help it, Chris? <laughs> what a wonderful time it is over at Disney this time of year. Beautiful. North Carolina State, six drives, five touchdowns, and one missed field goal. Ah. Four of the five touchdowns passes by Rivers. This is a live ball. Randall comes back and gets the muff that Clark Green couldn't handle. And brought down at the 12-yard line <coughs> by Oliver Hoyt. <laughs> you Phillips having any fun on his way out here? Four touchdowns. That is a Tangerine Bowl record. As mentioned, that includes the uh, games that were played down in South Florida when this was the Blockbuster, CarQuest, and Micron PC Bowl. Best thing you can say about Phillip Rivers besides all the, the physical abilities and attributes is his leadership starting in his first year because of being around his dad as a, as a high school coach. I don't care who it is on the team. I don't care what their background is. He has a unique way of relating to every single player on the team. Offense, defense, doesn't matter where they're from, what their background is. They all respect him and look up to him like a coach. And it's very rare to find that. Well, Philip, uh, as Green was stopped by Manny Lawson, Philip spent uh, his formative years kind of elbowing around with his dad on the sidelines as his dad was a high school coach in Alabama, you know, hanging around the chain guys and hanging around the line and learning plays and learning football from his dad. He said even to this day, when the game plan goes in and there's a new wrinkle, he calls his dad and tells dad, hey, when you see this play, we're going to run this and we put this on top of it. And uh, one of the many special relationships that Philip has with his dad. the loss of one here second and 11 and Winnemore's throws deflected but nobody was uh, at that next level to come up with the interception Wayne about, Herndon with the pressure how about Philip Rivers dad you know his dad Philip is, is a football coach now Wakefield High School in Raleigh North Carolina 10 and 3 he took over a brand new school yep. and within four years he's got a 10 and 3 record at that school and he said told us Philip Rivers did. The most influential person in his whole life has been his dad. And I'm telling you what, that, that just makes me feel wonderful. What a great human being that kid is. And dads and sons can share so oh. much, but they're able to speak the language of football and share the passion for it as well. And as you guys know, that's something special. Here comes some heat off the corner. Another blitz up the middle. Winnemore gets away, tries to make a play, and it's incomplete. The intended for Mark Simmons. So NC State forces one of the rare three and outs here on the night. And we'll see an even more rare punt. The timing of that first three and out is, is not good after NC State scores. And now Kansas has a terrible kickoff return. And to go three and out is not the right time. Because you know Phillip Rivers is over there not only cheering on the crowd and getting loud for the defense, he's ready to put up another touchdown. Here comes the second punt of the game for Curtis Ansel. Remember, 91 Manny Lawson. Pretty good standing up there. <laughs> yeah, he's blocked four. He might set up a return here, but if they come, 91 is usually close to it. Here he comes. He got it! He blocked the punt! As State put their hands on it, it will be NC State ball inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Good call, Mike. I tell you what, that's a wonderful call. Give me a stat to back you up, Mike. The most blocked kick since 2000, North Carolina State, 31, Virginia Tech, 26. An amazing thing to me. Listen to this. And now 32 with the one here at the ball. Listen to this. Since Chuck Amato left, we'll watch Lawson here. Watch it. How about blocking Boom. him? He, he right. leads the nation. I mean, you might want to keep an eye on 91. 91 White is as has a tendency to block punts. Since Chuck Somebody block him. Yo, let me finish. Go ahead. When Chuck Amato <laughs> left, since he left Florida State, yeah. Florida State is not in the top 
15 teams. Now that, see, that's where it comes ah, yeah. full circle. Yeah, you know, I want to say that. All the way back to Tallahassee. Yes, that's right. Somehow. Since 2000, Florida State is not in the top 15. So what you're saying where is North Carolina State is number one. That means they miss him at North Carolina yeah. State. Yeah. So that's why I try to get across to you. No, 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 in other words, nice job, Wolfpack. But in reality, Bobby, get it in gear down in Tallahassee. Archery, trying to make it happen. Keeps it alive. Takes it inside the 15. And the penalty flag comes in here at the end of the play. Dude, he's a strong, strong receiver. Yeah. 6'1", 200 pounds. And he... It's probably the area he's improved the most is picking up yards after the catch. Whack officials and Paul Labine figuring out how to administer this flag. Five yard face mask will give NC State a first down inside the red zone. So, those of you just joining us, it is the 2003 Mazda Tangerine Bowl, the start of Capital One Bowl Week here on ESPN. Those of you tuning in for Monday Night Countdown, usually on ESPN at this time. Stu Scott and the guys are over on ESPN2 getting you ready for the Packers and Raiders at the top of the hour on ABC. Right after us, we'll have Iowa and Texas Tech. Steve Alford against Bobby Knight. So a very good college hoop game to follow. Here in North Carolina State trying to send Phillip Rivers away from Raleigh with another victory. No quarterback has started more games in the history of Division I football. 51st and final start here tonight. It is first and one, actually, with the flag. Because the penalty, it stayed first down. So, first and one. Bust up the middle. Roger Davis, the freshman out of Tallahassee. Touchdown. There's Tallahassee. Get on the board there. Starting with the punt block from Manny Lawson. I like Reggie Davis coming in there with some fresh legs. Davis, who was a linebacker and fullback mostly in high school, at 6'2", 220 is a big back. Did all of his 24 runs for 82 yards against Duke this year. And powers it in for NC State's sixth touchdown of the night. Best thing that could happen between now and next year is Reggie Davis drop a few pounds, get a little quicker, and push T.A. McClendon to just have a heck of a one-two punch next year at that backfield. Piker adds the extra point. So let's see. Seven possessions, six touchdowns, and a missed field goal. Right, Reggie Davis carries it in for that one. Four presented by Mazda. There's a soul of a sports car in everything we make. In part by Duracell, trusted everywhere. By City Identity Theft Solutions. Free help getting your life back. That's using your card wisely. And by 1010-987. Give it a try. North Carolina State has scored over 40 on six different occasions this year. And the Mazda Tangerine Bowl makes it seven. We still have 21 minutes of football to play. In the hands of Clark Green. This return comes across the 20 and out to the 22-yard line. Mark Mangino gathered his team during that commercial. You guys got to reach back for everything you have to finish this game. Okay, you understand me? If anybody does understand me, let me know, okay? I'm going to watch this film closely. I'm going to see guys from the end and fighting and calling. That wrap, that grabbing stuff isn't going to get it. You got to wrap up the tackle. Let's get it done now, boys. Let's keep going. Really National TV down 42 to 17. He doesn't. Well don't quit. Don't embarrass yourself. Well said. Whittemore got it out there to his freshman Charles Gordon. He'll take it out to the 40-yard line. 
pickup of 17. And again, that's Lee, you can talk about this better than anybody. That's the process of trying to take a program that's been a perennial loser and trying to teach them the growing pains of trying to mature and grow as a program. Got them, you know, two and ten last year, six and six this year to a bowl game. But you don't want to get to that bowl game on national TV and embarrass yourself. Attitude. Yep. Remember the key word he kept talking about attitude in every single thing they do. Positive. He's building a football program the right way. First down from the 40, the senior quarterback Whittemore gives to Green, who has a nice wiggle here Got across midfield, almost a chance to break at the distance, a pickup of 13 yards. I want to get one more point about what Mangino is doing. Also, the fact he's talked about discipline and attitude in every area. He took the grade point average from 1.9 on that football team when he took over to 2.5 now. That's what he's talking about. Every single aspect of the game, Mangino wants perfection. And you hear so many coaches who have that philosophy talk about not just discipline with football, discipline with your life. Go into class. If I find out you're not going to class, you come see me, and we're going to talk. You do it a second time, there are going to be consequences. You do it a third time, and I'm going to call your parents. What a more great reception down the sideline for Rideau. Brandon Rideau has had a fabulous game here tonight. That's his seventh catch. He's going to get close to about 90 yards here on the night. He did his best impression of Mike Williams at USC here. Break the right hand and pulls it in to secure the football. And hey, this Kansas offense isn't quitting. They just they just need to be able to continue to try to punch it in and come up with points. Close to 400 yards now of total offense. And there's another case of Rito as a kid from Texas. Remember, we talked to, to, to Mark about this man, Gino, all the time. He said, I got to recruit all over the country. I'm going to get into that point one more time. First and ten. Whittemore on a design quarterback draw. Gets a yard to the 16. You know, Coach, when you talk about the program and building mm -hmm. it, at least there is something to lean back on in terms of tradition. There have oh, been yeah. many lean years, but was there any better than the 63-64 All-American Gale Sayers? First player in Division One history to have a 99-yard run to it. Against Nebraska, 1963. Not fair. I mean, look at the legs. He's all legs. Look at these guys trying to stay up with him. He was so far ahead of his time. Look at that. Youngest oh. ever inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame, 1977. Age 34. One of the all-time greats. What a more for Gordon. Broken up by A.J. Davis, who is there on the cover. He's one of... Uh, several prominent football alums in the Kansas uh, scrapbook, Gale Sayers. Uh, this time, Whittemore was just a hair late, giving Davis a time, giving Davis enough time with his quickness to come over and recover because he was beat to the corner by Charles Gordon. But it was nice recovery speed. The ball was thrown a little bit late there. And A.J. Davis has made a couple of nice plays. An interception. Also, a redshirt freshman from Durham, North Carolina. Looks like a good-looking prospect for the future. Right future, yeah. Cannot get away from the rush. Mario Williams, the freshman All-America, brings him down back at the 22. Fourth down. They'll certainly go for it here. Uh, we keep talking about freshmen, freshmen on this defense, and Mario Williams ended up with four sacks at the end of the regular season. There's his fifth. They talk about his athletic ability. You guys, we touched on him earlier, 6'7", 255 pounds. You imagine him as he grows into his body. I mean, allow him to lift weights in the offseason. By the time he's a junior, he is going to be a man. Well, Lee, I was wrong and you were wrong. They're going to come out and try to get the field goal here to make it 42-20. Well... Johnny Becker shot. He kissed, kicked most of the year. Just over 50%, 8 of 15, but he's stronger legged, so he'll try. Let's see what officially Marty Aronoff says a 40 yarder. And uh, I think it was going sideways as it went through. It still counts for three. 62 points here tonight. We still have 18 minutes of football left to go. When we come back, more on Philip Rivers. We'll talk to his fan. This is no ordinary music. Back here in Orlando at the 2003 Mazda Tangerine Bowl. Philip Rivers of NC State leading 42 to 20. Final collegiate game for one of the best in NC State history. That is Jersey retired. Only seven other men 
had that honor in NC State football history. We'll go down with the all-time greats. He still has another quarter and change here. Up 22. Oh, a deep kickoff here. Davis is going to be forced to take an A. It's a touchback. Back at the 20-yard line. Long field for Rivers and company to go. Well, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Philip Rivers' career is uh, certainly taking a sideways jaunt that most don't experience. He married his junior high school sweetheart, Tiffany. They have been out 17-month-old Hallie, and uh, both were there to watch husband and daddy get his jersey retired for the last home game. And there they are here at the game. I thought it was neat when, uh, getting tired. Yeah, when, when Philip uh, when Philip and uh, Tiffany were going to get married Philip asked his dad asked her dad and then asked Chuck Amato <laughs> before they got married. Here's Jerry Punch now up there in the stands, Doc. And Michael, I'm up here with the entire Rivers family. If you take a look to my far left, there's Grandma Joanne sitting down here. This is his little brother Stephen, who's 11 years old. You just saw, you just saw Tiffany and Hallie here, 17-month-old Hallie. I got Dad Steve to my right, and to his right is Grandpa Bob. And Steve, I've got to ask you. We just showed the whole. Bunch. I could go on down the road, but we only have a quarter left to play. You know, we know how much your son enjoys college football. What are your thoughts as you watch him play his final football game in a Wolfpack uniform? Well, it's just hard to imagine that we've uh, it's finished four years. Uh, I can tell you that you know, if we can hang on and win this game, he'll, he'll be happy after it. We'll all be happy. But it'll be a little bittersweet because what a tremendous four years this has been for us, our family, and for Philip especially. But it's just been such a blessing. The Wolfpack family has just been so is so special to us and, and will always be. It's been a great four years, but it's certainly a short one. Of all the records, uh, all the all the yards and all the records that he's accomplished from the Atlantic Coast Conference at NC State, what do you think he's most proud of? Him? Everything he's done in four years, what is he most proud of as a Wolfpack quarterback? Well, I, I don't know. I, he just loves this game so much, and he loves this team. These, this, every team that he's played on so far, he loves these, this Wolfpack family. And I don't know. It would be hard to pinpoint any stat because he's not a stats guy. He's more about winning and losing and trying to win and, and being a good guy and a good person and being the best football player he can be. So the only the only thing he would say, I think, would be um, he wish he'd have won a few more games. He wish he could have helped this team win a few more games. And that one might be. I wanted to ask Dad here before we go about his thoughts as a coach, Dad. Your thoughts about his ability to play at the next level. I know a lot of the scouts are saying they think his uh, mechanics have improved significantly in the past 18 months. Well, I tell you, he's had some great coaching here at NC State. He, uh, Coach Chow got him started with a mind game, and, and Coach Signetti and uh, Coach Mazzoni and these guys have just really worked with his footwork, and he's really seeing the field about as good as you can see it right now. So he's gonna, he's, I think he's going to be a good NFL player. Well, Steve, thank you very much, and thank you for sharing your young man with college football for the last four years Steve Rivers the father of Philip thank you doc Charles Gordon takes the first punt of the night picked up one block goes up the middle flag is down so he's out of midfield but it will come back from the spot of the foul and Kansas will have it back near the 30 Austin Herbert came in to punt I want to mention him because it's the first time he's done anything all night a second flag comes down uh, after all of the uh, players start to separate so let's see how they'll split this out we may have a hold or push in the back and then a dead ball personal foul here you mentioned Austin Hubert the fact he's a senior in the last three bowl games he averaged 43 yards a punt this guy's a nice looking prospect for the NFL I thought, the, I thought he may have showered up at halftime I'm glad he <laughs> stuck around for the second half <laughs> well there it is two separate fouls one a dead ball foul so the mark there is Austin yeah every punt in this century well, since 2000, 2000, yeah, 2000 yeah. 2001, yeah. 2, yeah. 3, so. Caught you off guard there for a second. Yeah, we got, we got what you. What are talking about? <laughs> Get to the receive team. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, gets the kicking team. 10 yard penalty, followed by a 15 yard penalty. So when they mark it all off, I think it'll be around uh, the 44, 45 yard line. Lee, you right, watching this still, show? We're all, all right. Over it. 122 to go. And we got plenty of time. Two minutes and 35 seconds left to go in the third quarter. That's what? Two more series? Two more series, he should have that. Well, uh, first yeah. three and out. First chance that uh, Tiffany and Hallie didn't have a chance to cheer husband and dad taking the team down into scoring position. Phillips has been able to work the balance, too. You know, you're married, so you, you hang out with the guys as a quarterback. It's part of being a leader, but you have to go home and do the dad stuff as well with a. 
17 month old at home. Woodamore in Kansas. Good field position. Not out of this game yet. Try a little trickeration and have some space here for Mark Simmons. Eight yards out to the 48 yard line. Well, a reminder as soon as we're done, we'll see if Iowa and Texas Tech can put up this many points. Bob Knight and Steve Alford, they're getting along now. Now they're buddies. Alford's been down there and talked to Bob Knight, brought a notebook down, spent a whole day talking with his old coach, filled it up to get some of the knowledge from one of the best all time coaches in the sport. Iowa, Texas Tech coming up as soon as we're done tonight here on ESPN. I spent 10 years with Bobby Knight, and I think he's the greatest teacher of defense in the history of basketball worldwide. And I'll tell you why in a second. We have a lot of teasing here. Next right, place. Well, 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 I, want... I understand there's a penalty marker. They, they want to hear the, your point. Right? I was with him 10 years, and I used to have guys come in from Wake Forest to talk about the zone blitz or whatever, or maybe a guy from Duke. He used to have them come from Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> Moscow, China. I know you're serious. I'm serious. Yeah, serious. Every, Worldwide. every country, I'm telling you, the guys would come from all over the world to sit and talk to Bobby Knight about ball, basketball ball defense. And the offense. Five yard penalty. So while uh, you were holding court with Duke and Wake Forest, yeah. they, they were breaking down. He was Zone breaking Blitz. it down with China. China, Ethiopia, wherever the guys. And I'm telling you, they would come in and they would just sit there like they were going to visit the Pope. You know, in the Catholic Church, the guy was, you know, I'll, 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 no, I, I didn't I'll do it. Okay. That's okay. Fault. Come on, and, down here, and Bobby would take him and go through it step by step. The guy's the greatest teacher, I think, in the history of basketball when it comes to teaching defense. And was real supportive when you guys were there oh, together, right? Oh yeah, he really. I enjoy, you know, Mike, I enjoyed working can, for him. It's hard to breathe, <laughs> on the as long as you didn't win too much. <laughs> no, I, I enjoyed working for Bobby. It was fun. You know the thing about me, I, was, I must have been dumb. I was a head football coach in college for 14 years at the two world's greatest basketball schools. Louisville and Indiana. Well, now wait a minute, sweetheart. There are some people in Lawrence as we watch this 15-yard run by Clark Green saying, hey, what about us, world's greatest basketball schools? So I said I was at two of them. <laughs> but some of the challenge that Mark Mangino has to deal with here. Try to build a winning football program at a school that is legendary for its basketball success. Here comes Green. Touch it back. Here he goes at the 30. Another first down. Boy, is he having a good night as well, huh? Boy, that should take Green about 95 yards rushing here. You know, ever since Mangino talked to his football team, particularly offensively, you notice some fight back? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, he's serious. Guy knows what he's doing. Right on 95 for Green. They sneak a score in here. We'll have a game in the fourth quarter. Mangino, just like a mile from Pennsylvania. And Winnemore is going to run this one. Ooh, he's been taking a lot of hits. Oliver Hoyt delivered that one. Moore gets up off the deck and the quarter's about to run out so maybe they'll just uh, let this run down to the fourth here. Quarter number four at the 2003 Mazda Tangerine Bowl. 